Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to use data validation to check inputs on a mailing list. So a basic mailing list you have your your name, your address, your state zip, uh, phone numbers, and maybe if this is kind of like a small mailing list for a, a customer, maybe you have a account number. And you want to have instances where if you are entering information in here or you're giving this list to somebody information, uh, there's some checks like you don't you don't put a number here in the field here and it tells you if you put a number here to try again or if the uh, state is something where you don't want to think about it you can just have a, a selection to select the the state that's another check that uh, we can put in there it's a validation check here so let's say that maybe this is uh, New York so we don't have to go ahead and type it in or if we type it in it'll error it out first so there's no such thing as OZ right it'll say it's not valid it'll just let us select from that list and maybe for the zip code it'll only accept the five digit zip code if we press anything else um, it, it will tell us uh, and for the phone number maybe it would expect a ten digit phone number not a seven digit phone number it'll tell us that it wants a full ten digit number and if we have a count number here let's say we only want to count numbers that start with A um, and we would tr see if we put in another account number we can start, start with A, it will check if it started with an A. So there's a very basic data validation examples that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to show you how to uh, perform these specific data validations uh, in another sheet here. So let me go ahead and copy this. Control C to copy. Bring a new sheet here. Control V to paste. Let me select the whole sheet and double click the column here to adjust the width. Let me increase the size here a little bit so you can see it a little better. Let me go and double click any one of the column links here. It'll adjust it, the whole thing. Now I'll say in the first instance here I didn't want to have any numbers in there. I just want to have this all text and, and have a check for text. What I can do is just select data validation, go under data validation. This is under the uh, data tab in the ribbon and this is going to be something where I'm going to allow a customized type of validation. So the formula for that is just is the text is text and then open parentheses and the text I select the area I selected is A2 right so press enter. Now if I tried to type in anything but text maybe one two three it's going to give me an error and also incidentally what happens is if I go into data validation and if I wanted to have a specific error or alert I can say I can say over here, please type text only, not numbers. Click OK, and you can see if I type in numbers here, we can see that the input message is there. Now, a little bit on doing something like this, if we had another row here that we typed in text or numbers, it wouldn't really apply. So in the instance where we want to have it apply continuously, in the future if we had numbers up here, or areas where we're going to input, we want to have that apply. So one way to do that is when we s create this data validation, we select a range of cells that this data validation will apply for. The other way to do it, which is probably a little bit better, is to turn this range of cells into a table. So it grows. So I'm going to go and de press delete there. And so to do that, what we need to do is just select in any cell and go and press Control T to turn it into a table. It's going to create this as a table and it's going to ask us if the table has headers and that's up here and we'll go ahead and click OK. So what happens here now if we wanted to add additional data let's say Jane it's going to increase that table. So you can see the table is expanded here. So in looking here it looks like the data validation probably is going to follow through with the, tab with the table now. So if I press if I go over here and press tab and create another row here let me say I'll make this Sally. That's okay. And if I go to row four and I go one, two, three, four, you can see now that the data validation has followed through with the other with the addition of records here or rows here. So so when we're creating this type of mailing list, it's probably better to turn it into a table and then when we create our validations, it's gonna follow through. We don't have to adjust it every time. Let me go ahead and just delete these rows and we'll just continue on with this one. So in here we, what we can do is do the same thing if I just go under uh, if I go into data and data validation and we have here our settings I'm gonna go 
this would be the custom and also this, this is going to be something where it's text and so I'll just put is text and so basically it's asking is this particular cell text true or false if it's true then the data validation will pass if it's false then it's going to give the error so since this is selected B2 it's, I'm just going to go ahead and put B2 in here so, so the cell that I'm in is B2 and what's going to happen is when I create this data validation and I'm going to just put the error message please use text not numbers now if I put the uh, if I expand the table what it's going to do even though when I created that formula for B2 Excel smart enough is when I increase this table it's going to go ahead and put it it's going to apply that to B3 so you can see that it's there so if I go into B3 and go to data validation you can see B3 has been adjusted here so that's the smart thing about Excel that it'll do that let me go ahead and delete this row here now right click press delete and let's go to the next one where we're looking at state so let's go into our state here so we remember from earlier when I selected the state I had a drop down where I can select state so to do this you actually have to create a data validation as a list so I go into data validation go under data validation here and I'll go under list so here the source the source I've already created a source list down here basically it's just one column of all the abbreviations for the states so I've gone to sheet 2 here and select from here and I'll just press the control shift down arrow it'll select all the way to the end here and click OK you're gonna see now that I have my list of states now I can click on that one or I can click on that one I think this was New York so I can I can, I can type NY and it'll, it'll, it'll take it now this little bit a little bit here where it doesn't take the the uppercase lowercase but if I press uppercase it'll select that so if I select anything else like OZ Oz oops let me go and get out of there if I select if I press OZ you'll see that it errors out and so it's not going to select that now the other way to also do this if you notice I had another column in here and I had this other column of state abbreviations this column if I notice if you click in here the name the name field here is the state but if I click here and I select selected this range control shift down arrow you'll see that there's a name for it it's called state and I named that and so basically the way you name it is if you select the range here let me go and select that cell control shift down arrow and I'll call this state 2 state 2 and so basically now I've named those ranges of cells state 2 and what I can do now is I can go on here and let me just go ahead and delete this data validation clear all and what I can do now is I can go under data validation and I can click list and I can I can type state equals state 2 but if you forgot it you go, the other way to do it is just to press the F3 key and select state 2 and it's going to bring it in there click OK and now I have the different state abbreviations so that's the way that you can do that particular check or this particular validation. Now the other validation here was for zip code. So I, I, let's say I only wanted a five digit zip code. So what I can do here is go under data validation and data validation and go under the text length. So the text length, basically the minimum is five and the maximum is five. So I, I can't put anything uh, over five or less than five, right? So if I try one, two, three, four, it's gonna give me an error. If I try one, two, three, four, five, six, it will give me an error. So one, two, three, four, five is the only thing that works. Now this one is going to be the same thing where I have data validation and if I only want a 10 digit number, same thing, same concept here where we have the text length of 10 and 10. So if I just want to have a minimum and maximum of 10, I can click OK and you'll notice that if I type in just five, one, two, three, four, or seven, one, two, one, two, it will give me an error. But then how do I get this format here? I want to I want to have that format consistent so basically that's a custom number format what you can do is right click that cell and go under format cells and under the category special here is the phone number format so it's going to make a phone number in parentheses with a dash right so that's how you keep it in there so that's that will keep that format so in any way that you type it in let's say I do um, maybe I'll do uh, uh, San Francisco 415 five 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 one two one two it's gonna turn into that particular format 
I'm going to go ahead and control Z to undo that. That's New York. So let me go ahead and go to this count number. Let's say that we have a count number and we just want it. The count number is always going to start with the letter A. What we can do is go into data validation and uh, for the value we're going to also do a custom and the, the particular function that we're going to put in is equal LE, LEF left of H1 since we're in cell H, excuse me, H2, H2. That particular the first uh, and one, the first character there always has to equal a, a, right? So that's the function. That that means it's going to look at the start from the left. It's going to count one character, and it's going to see if that character equals the letter A. So click OK. So if we try to do like one two three four, you get an error. Uh, if we do B one two three four five, you get an error. If we do A, one, two, three, it will be OK. So also in this particular validation, probably it's a good, good idea to put an error message. So I put the account number should start with the, with the letter A, right? So now it will pick it up. If I started with the letter B, it will tell me that message, right? So cancel. So basically, if I went to this next column, if I type a number in there, nothing's going to work. I'll click cancel. I type Jane Smith, and I'll do one, two, three, main two. Any town, I'll do any town here. And then right now, since it's a table, now I've got this drop down also available. Maybe uh, they live in California, and maybe the zip code is uh, maybe a nine four one one. Oh one or two, let's make that an error. And it's going to tell me it's not valid. And so it's only going to accept the five digit number 94112. Maybe I'd make that up. So that's a five digit number. And let's say that there's a phone number. No, maybe I just do the phone number. That's seven digits. It's going to tell me that it's wrong. I should have put an error message in there. But now you can also put an error message there. So if I do 415, 555-1212, it's going to accept that. And also the formatting has also come through since this is a table and I made the custom number format for the table up here, it's brought it down to this particular row too. So as we increase the table, all the formatting also gets inherited. So the same here. So I type B, 1, 2, 3, now it's going to give me an error. If I type A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so now it's going to let me pass. So there's some basic validation that we can use using the data validation feature if we want to create a, a customer mailing list. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.